Hi, my name is Dan Callahan. I'm an engineer on Mozilla's developer relations team, and I wanted to take 20 minutes to show you how I recently used the Firefox dev tools to track down an issue I was running into on GitHub. Now, normally when you're using GitHub, you can drag and drop screenshots to attach them to bug reports. But when I tried to do this in Firefox Nightly, our pre-beta, pre-developer edition channel, I would get an error that my file was too large, and to try again with something smaller than 10 megs. But the screenshot's less than 500 kilobytes, so it should have worked fine. Let's open the DevTools and see what went wrong. I'll go to the menu, click on Developer, and click on Toggle Tools. Then let's switch over to the Network panel and try this request again. And there we go. So if I click on this request, I can see that I made a post to github.com, upload, policies, assets, and got a 422 unprocessable entity back. If I look at the response body, it's a JSON array with five errors. Name has a file extension that doesn't match the content type. Name is a missing field. Content type isn't included. Content type is a missing field. So it's clear that whatever we sent wasn't processable. It wasn't necessarily the size. So if we click on the parameters tab, we can see what we sent to GitHub. And it looks like we just sent the string object form data, which is clearly useless. Now, if this was almost correct, we could switch over to the headers tab, click edit and resend. And in here, we can modify headers, we can modify the request body. Um, we can kind of do whatever we want and easily resend the, a request that was only slightly wrong or if we need to test an API. Now, obviously in this case, we don't know what this should have looked like. And if we try to resend object form data, we just get another 422 with all the same errors. But usually resending things can be useful. Still, let's look at this payload. I have a theory as to what went wrong. If GitHub was creating a form data object, let's say x equals new form data, and then setting keys on it, so let's append foo and set it to bar. And we can get that data back out, so if we x out get foo, we get bar. So if GitHub took this form data object and coerced it to a string instead of properly serializing it, we get exactly the same string that we posted. So let's see if that's actually what's happening. I'll go ahead and clear out the console and close it. And we'll switch over to the debugger tab. Now you can see I've got three minified files, so I'll come over here and turn on auto prettify minified sources. And now when I click on one of those files, It'll take just a second, but the file will get retabbed, reindented into something that's a little bit easier to debug. Um, fortunately, this file alone is nearly 15,000 lines. Let's see, it's da, 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 exactly 14,973. So figuring out where to start here is gonna be hard. But what we can do is we can open up the sidebar. We knew that this triggered on a drop event. So when we click on the events panel, we can see all of the events that have handlers we can toggle a breakpoint on drop. And we can also scroll here and see whatever else is, is bound. So now that we've got the breakpoint on drop, let's drag a file in and see what happens. Bam, there we are. Line 5692 inside the event handler for drop events. So there are a few things to notice here. First of which is that over on the right, we can see all the variables that are in scope, including this, which is currently the, the div that we dropped the file onto. We can see the first parameter is the event itself. We can inspect all of its properties there. We can also, of course, see that same T item over here on the, the right. But let's, uh, let's start stepping through this. The first line is going to remove the drag over class, which gets rid of that yellow border. And then we go into R equals T dot data transfer, where T is our drag event. You can see that R is undefined. When we step, it gets defined. And now we split into this really, really nasty three level deep ternary expression. Rather than trying to understand this ternary up front, let's just start at the left and work our way over. We start by testing the truthiness of r.types, which is a DOM string list with two elements. This should be true, but let's just double check. So we've got r.types, and if we put that in a ternary, it's either yay or nay. We get yay, so we know that we're going to take the, the truthy branch, which starts here and goes on. And it starts with x of r. So when we step in to this function, we'll be inside x. And one of the things to notice here is that we can 
can actually navigate the call stack up top here. We can go back to the caller, to the callee, and we can also see this on the left side. And every time we switch stack frames, you can see the variables on the right updating. So let's go back here. We're going to test t.types, which t again is our DOM string list. Um, so if we look at this, t.types, it should be truthy because it's the exact same thing that was r.types in the outer scope. And it is. So we'll l.call t.types files. l is a binding to index of. So we're really looking for the index of the, the string files inside that array. And it's at index one, that's greater than or equal to zero. So we should return true out of this. And yep, we're gonna return true. So I'll step again. And now we go into the next level of the, the truthy branch, e r.files this. Now the thing to notice here is that uh, r.files is a file list. It's an array of length one. And it just has the file metadata. So screenshot.png, 450k, it's an image. And this obviously is the uh, event target that we had, uh, had dropped our file onto. So we're just gonna thread that down through. So let's let's step into E and step over all these these variable definitions. Step, 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 step. And now we're at something more interesting. We're setting up an empty array S and then iterating over our files, which we only have one. So we're only gonna do this once. And ultimately we'll, let's see, set that to N and then throw in through this function J and push it onto S. So we're looping over our image metadata. And if we step through, you'll see over there on the right that these variables get set. We have the empty array. We set up N, R, and uh, I. And so now n should be equal to the first file, and it is. And now we're going to call j n e. Now remember, e is just the, the this um, object, the thing that we was the target of the drag event. So let's step into j and see what happens there. Now j is starting to look interesting. If I hide this, you can go ahead and see that we've got things dealing with data upload policy URL. Um, what else is going on here? So we, we start with defining this function i up at the top. And i does a bunch of stuff related to uploading. So we've got the uh, URL, we've got upload start events, s.upload, upload invalid events, upload setup. And then down at the very bottom, after we define i and do all this, we may branch into it. So let's go ahead and set a breakpoint inside i and let the program run until it hits that breakpoint. So when we turn on breakpoint, if we switch over to the sources panel, uh, you can see the breakpoint there, we can toggle it on or off. This will let us get back here in the future if we need to. Click run, and here we are inside I. And we can see that we now have this progress indicator. Um, let's, let's walk through this and see what happens. So we'll step and see, we call STE get attribute data upload policy URL. So if we, if we look at E and look at its data set, so yeah, upload policy URL is upload policies assets, which is exactly the endpoint we're looking for. And let's see, and what is T right now? T is our image metadata. So let's step into S and uh, just step over all these variable declarations. And now this looks good. This is setting up a form data object and it looks like we're Depending name, size, content type, do, 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 do. And we end up in this uh, fetch JSON function. So let's take a second and look at this, this form data object to make sure that all the, all the metadata is actually there. So if we say n and n.get name or size, let's say name, content type. So it looks like everything's there. Uh, and what's fetch.json gonna do with it? Fetch.json takes an argument E, which is that URL or path, and it passes in a, an object with method post body n, where n is that, that metadata, that form data. So inside fetch.json, we've got a really, really small function body. And it again takes in the, the path 
and that uh, that JavaScript object that has method post on it in our form data is the body. And so, so that's just mapping directly onto to these two lines here. And see, so we set headers. Oh, oh wait, no, first we, huh, T of E of O. So we step into E. All we're doing is basically adding the uh, credentials equals same origin onto our, our object. And there it is. And so we'll step out. And now the, the T function basically does the same thing with CSRF tokens, so we'll just step past that. Now we add the accept header, and now we call fetch in O, then I, then R. So in is our path, O is our JavaScript object, and see the, the body is the form data. Um, we can see we've got some headers. If we say o.body.get name, yep, the metadata is all still there, so this, this should work. And what this effectively is doing is it's it's calling fetch, passing it that path. So it's saying fetch upload policies assets. And it's gonna use O, which says, you know, method, post, body, blah, blah, blah. So let's, uh, let's see what actually happens. Here's our old post. We'll clear that out. We'll send this. And we got a 422 and set the same payload, object form data. But we knew the form data was good, right? And same old errors. So what what is this fetch thing? So fetch is actually a function that's provided by the browser. It's kind of a promise-based replacement for XHRs. And we can see if this, this fails in other contexts by, say, going to example.com. And we'll set up a, a form data object real quick. So there we go, add some data to it. And if I try fetching just the, the root of this domain, uh, we'll use post. And we'll set the body to that form data object we just created. And there it is, obviously this succeeds because there's no backend processing. But we can see that, that our body was still just object form data. So, so this is clearly something wrong with the implementation of fetch in Firefox. And I recall reading a, an article on Mozilla Hacks, which is kind of our emerging tech blog about the fetch API. So let's go, let's go check that real quick. And let's see, so if I scroll through here, uh, headers, dot, dot, requests, and responses, uh, dealing with bodies. So body is an instance of any of array buffer, view, blob file, string, uh, form data, currently not supported by either Gecko or Blink. Firefox expects to ship this in version 39. Okay, so, so we have fetch, but our fetch implementation isn't complete. And the reason that I'm only noticing this on nightly is that normally GitHub is uh, using a polyfill to, to provide the fetch API. Uh, but the polyfill is doing the right thing and saying, hey, I see a native implementation. I'm going to let you try to use that. But our native implementation is broken. So so we're kind of in the, the worst of both worlds here, right? So let's go file a bug. Uh, go to Bugzilla, click on file a bug, click on core. And I know this is kind of a core DOM API. So I'll set the component to DOM. This is happening on Firefox 39, which is currently our nightly branch. And because this is actually impacting the web, I'll set the severity to major. Uh, provide a good summary, and GitHub will show me a, or Bugzilla rather, will show me a list of similar bugs. But imagine that none of these were here. Imagine that I'm the first person to find and report this. I'd come down here and I'd type up a use case. So if you try this, blah, 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 blah. Um, as a result, I can't drag and drop images into issues on GitHub. And I would normally come down here and submit the bug. But I actually did this yesterday. So I can click on the bug ID, or two days ago rather. And let's see. So I can see that this bug, after I filed it, was, was modified last about 36 hours after I filed it. It's resolved, fixed. And if I come down here, let's see what happened. So I filed the bug. Five minutes later, Ben Kelly closed it as a duplicate of this other bug. 
But it turns out that this wasn't really a duplicate because this other bug deals with deserializing form data in the fetch API, but my bug was with serializing it. So we reopened the bug um, after some discussion in the other one, and they have kind of a series of patches, comments, reviews. You can see kind of how this is being worked on in real time. And it ends with being resolved as fixed and a comment pointing to the actual commit in our Mercurial repo. So I can click on that, we can go over here, and we can see the implementation of serializing form data with the fetch API. And since this landed last night and I'm on the Firefox Nightly channel, if I update my version of Firefox, I should actually get a new build that this works in. So let's see what happens. Open up about Firefox, it'll download an update. I'll click to restart. Now, one thing to note is that by default, Nightly is using a process separation called electrolysis. That's why my tabs are underlined. And drag and drop doesn't work there at all. So we'll open up a non-electrolysis window. And we'll go to GitHub. And let's try opening a new issue. And let's try dragging this file in here and seeing if it works. And it does. So that's the whole process from finding an issue, tracking it down, filing a bug, and a patch eventually landing in a nightly build of Firefox. If you're interested in the cutting edge web platform features that we're working on, but without the instability of nightly, I'd encourage you to check out Firefox Developer Edition, which is kind of our post nightly pre beta channel. And you can see what's happening on the web platform by following our blog at hacks.mozilla.org.